Ja, guten Tag. Mein Name ist Frau Freeman und wir kommen hier an der Hearts and Essex High School. Ähm, wir werden jetzt ein PowerPoint machen und äh, Sie werden dann einige ähm, Übungen machen können. Okay, also wollen wir beginnen. Also, willkommen. Wir stellen uns vor. Zuerst ich. Also mein Name, wie gesagt, ist Frau Freeman. Ich bin über 21 Jahre alt, natürlich. Meine Schule war diese Schule, die Hearts and Essex Schule. Diese Schule war ein Gymnasium und ich bin vor vielen Jahren hierher gekommen. Natürlich habe ich Familie, ich habe einen, ich, einen Mann, ich bin verheiratet, ich habe zwei Kinder, Entschuldigung, nein, ich habe zwei Brüder und drei Söhne und eine Enkeltochter. Aber natürlich darf man nicht vergessen, dass mein Hund zur Familie gehört. Und wenn ich zu Interessen komme, meine Interessen sind mit dem Hund spazieren gehen, backen und vielleicht lesen und so weiter. Was ich mag, was ich nicht mag. Also ich mag nicht Fleisch essen. Ich bin Vegetarierin. Ich mag sehr gern nach Deutschland fahren oder nach Europa fahren. Warum du Deutsch studieren willst, also warum ich Deutsch studiert habe, weil ich Sprachen liebe und meiner Meinung nach Kommunikation ist Macht. Wenn du kommunizieren kannst, dann ist alles gut. Und ähm, ich liebe Deutschland, ich liebe Frankreich und so weiter. Also war, war das für mich kein Thema. Ich wollte Fremdsprachen studieren. Ähm, andere Fächer, ich habe auch Kunst studiert. Ähm, und äh, ja, also Mathematik habe ich auch sehr gerne gelernt. So, kannst du jetzt diese Fragen beantworten? Now pause the video and answer these questions yourself. Throughout the video, you will see video anhalten, and that means pause the video so that you can do the exercises yourself. Okay, wir machen weiter. So, die Themen sind zum Ersten Familie im Wandel, the changing face of family. Und wir sehen hier viele Bilder. Und hier sind die Wörter dafür. Wiederholen. Die Kernfamilie. Die Großfamilie. Alleinerziehende Eltern. Eine Homo-Ehe. Eine Patchwork-Familie. Welches Bild passt zu welchem Titel? Und kannst du diese Bilder beschreiben? Zum Beispiel ähm, die Kernfamilie, das ist the core family, the normal, what we have up till now seen as the normal family, the, um, the nuclear family. Ähm, was ist die Großfamilie? Was ist alleinerziehende Eltern? Und so weiter. As we know, family structures have changed very much um, in the last few years and all of which are now considered normal families. Match them up and describe any one of these pictures using your complex GCSE structures. For example, uh, in diesem Bild gibt es eine Mutter und zwei Kinder. Ich kann in dem nächsten Bild eine Großfamilie sehen, uh, die sehr glücklich zu sein scheinen und so weiter. You have a go. Die Digitalwelt, die digitale Welt, das ist unser nächstes Thema. Und hier sehen wir einige Bilder von digitalen Sachen. Und hier sind die Titel. Ein Handy, ein Tablet, ein Computer, ein Roboter, ein selbstfahrendes Auto, ein Smartwatch und so weiter. Was ist was? Kennst du andere Technologien? Dann werden wir auch Musik, Mode und Fernsehen studieren. Wir werden sehen die verschiedenen Sorten von Musik, die man in Deutschland hat, aber auch Popmusik. Und Namika ist in Deutschland sehr beliebt 
Und sie singt das Lied Du bist mein Lieblingsmensch. Hier ist ein Link auf dem PowerPoint, aber man könnte in YouTube Namika und Du bist mein Lieblingsmensch eintippen und hör zu. So have a listen and listen to Namika singing Du bist mein Lieblingsmensch. Feste und Traditionen, das ist noch ein Thema und hier sehen wir auch einige Bilder vom Weihnachtsmarkt, Weihnachten, Ostern, Silvester, das Schützenfest, das Oktoberfest, Karneval, die Love Parade. Kennst du vielleicht andere Feste oder hast du einige von diesen Festen schon gesehen oder erlebt? Dann kommt Kunst. Ich liebe dieses Thema. Und man sieht hier einige Bilder von den Malern Kandinsky und Franz Marc. Sie sind beide sehr, sehr berühmt und sie malen moderne Kunst. Wie ist deine Meinung dazu? Wie findest du das? Was ist dein Lieblingsbild? Kannst du ein Bild beschreiben? Dann kommt Architektur und das ist auch sehr interessant. Wir werden auch vielleicht die Architekten Friedensreich, Hundertwasser, Schinkel und so weiter studieren. Vielleicht kennst du schon Bauhaus und Jugendstil. Was kannst du in diesen Bildern sehen? Und natürlich das Berliner Kulturleben. Kultur ist alles. I'm sure some of you may have already been to Berlin and experienced some of the Berlin life, cultural life. Um, I've been there and it was wonderful and I saw lots of different things and we're going to concentrate on the following. Religion, das Nachtleben, Musik, Essen, Nationalitäten, Kunst, Architektur, Museen, Oper, Theater und so weiter. Warst du schon in Berlin? Ja? Nein? And I'm going to do the next part in English because this is something that uh, some of you, particularly if you've been studying history, may know a little bit about. The reunification of Germany and the Berlin Wall, the history of the Berlin Wall, uh, why it was put up and why it came down again. Now this is very complex, so I'm not going to try and tell it all now, but it's something you may want to talk to your, um, your family about, because they can probably give you a little bit more information. But Germany was divided after Germany lost the Second World War. And imagine living in Berlin, and one day you wake up, and there's a wall between you and the people you love. You can't get from one side to the other. And if you have a look at some of these pictures, you'll see how it progressed. So in one picture you can see that there's some, some wire which is just separating two families. Now these are obviously people that know each other or love each other. It could be, they could be sisters. And all they can do now is look at each other from the other side of this barbed wire. The next picture of a soldier jumping over barbed wire is very, very well known around the world. And um, he's an East German soldier and he's supposed to be protecting the border that's being built. And in that split second, he decides, I don't want to be here. I want to be in the West, in the free West. So he drops his gun and jumps across the wire. And that picture went around the world. The next picture, you can see that they're starting to build the wall. The wall gradually gets higher. It gets more and more fortifications. And if you have a look now at the picture that says Schiesbefehl, you can see some of the tragedies that ensued because of this, when people tried to run across no man's land, and the order was to shoot, shoot to kill. If someone from the east was found trying to get across, it was shoot to kill. And the final picture you can see, which is all covered in graffiti, that was what the wall looked like from the west. It didn't look like that from the east. From the east, there were hundreds of yards of no man's land that you couldn't get across. But in the West, you could go right up to the wall. The other themes that we're going to be doing, and these will come up in the second year of A2, are the following. 
Einwanderung, Immigration, I'm sure you've heard a lot about immigration lately. Integration, Racism, Germany and the EU. Politics and Youth and the Reunification of Germany and its consequences. We'll also be studying a film and a book in year two. And the film we've been studying is Das Leben der Anderen. It's about the power and corruption of the East German secret police and how it affected everyday life. It's very, very good. It's won a lot of awards, so it's very worthwhile watching. Um, if you can see the link, you could have a, a look and, and see a little preview with subtitles. The book is Der Besuch der Alten Dame. It's a play and it's all about greed. It's a black comedy, a dark comedy. It's actually very, very good. Well, I think it's a dark comedy. Other people might, might consider it to be something else. Um, but it's certainly very dark. Uh, very, very worthwhile reading. Uh, we do have an exchange to Mainz, der Austausch nach Mainz. Um, in the light of what's happening at the moment, we don't know yet whether it's going to be on. Um, but I'm very happy to answer any questions that you may have on that or anything else if you'd just like to email them to the school and they can pass them on to me. Um, we've had an exchange with the school in Mainz for 30, maybe 40 years um, and it's always been very successful. Um, there are quite a few websites which would be useful. For um, I always recommend people to use wordreference.com um, as an online dictionary. There are magazines that you can look at, uh, Spiegel, Stern, Brite, Freundin, whatever you happen to be interested in. And there are some very good news and TV websites. Um, there's ARD, ZDF, and WDR. And these work a little bit like BBC iPlayer, so once you're on them, you can go on to Mediathek, and it will allow you to see films, to see series, to see documentaries in German. Okay, also das ist alles. Viel Spaß und ich freue mich darauf, euch kennenzulernen. Looking forward to meeting you all. Tschüss. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm currently in year 12 studying German, maths, physics and tech. I chose to study German for A-level because I wanted to keep my German heritage alive and thought it could be a great opportunity to carry on our hearts in Essex. Because the class sizes are generally smaller for A-level, you often get more one-to-one -one time with your teachers, which is great. I really enjoy learning more about German culture that the course teaches, which includes topics such as German festivals and Berlin history. I also like learning something new every lesson that makes me become more fluent in a language. Something I think which also really helps my speaking skills are the one-to-one -one speaking lessons with a native German speaker each week. I would suggest to anyone wanting to carry German on at Hot in Essex to be passionate about the language as like any other subject you need to work on it outside of school just as much as during each lesson. It is also helpful to immerse yourself in as much native German speech as possible. These could be films, pen pals or podcasts to increase your confidence in German. Hello, my name is Vilkvies. I'm currently in my first year studying law at undergraduate level. I studied German at Hearts in Essex alongside psychology and history. I chose to study German as I had just completed the GCSE. I got good grades, I enjoyed it, and I didn't want to lose the skills that I made from the GCSE. My favourite part of studying German at Hearts in Essex was definitely the exchange trip. It was such a worthwhile trip. I'm so glad that I was able to go, and it really did help um, in the A-level as it helped me gain confidence in my speaking which was a problem for me prior to the trip. Um, so such experience in the country speaking to native German speakers and you know being encouraged by native German speakers was really useful and I still talk to my exchange partner till today. Um, something that I have gained from the A-level outside of doing A-level is definitely my widened perspective now. I don't think I would be able to know so much about about the German culture if not for the A-level because it doesn't just teach you how to read, write and speak but it also introduces you to the German culture as well. Um, 
And some advice I'd give to somebody studying A-level German would definitely be consistency is key, even if you're just taking some time on your commute to go for your vocab, that's really important. And try as much as possible to practice your speaking because I know it can be quite daunting and such, but the more you practice, the more confident you get in it. So that's really useful. And try to enjoy it as much as possible because it's only two years.